there there aren't that many dishes that you can say are are from the panhandle and that you would be proud to put on your menu uh, year round and and that's the beautiful thing about mullet it's available in the spring and it's available in the fall and then we have Roger who puts it up and and we're able to to sell it all year long it's introducing some traditional food item some traditional food culture on a plate to perhaps a stranger that has never been to the Florida Panhandle sure I work at a great steakhouse we're a top restaurant but and, and people often look at the menu and go smoked mullet what is that you know so they don't have a clue but as a local we all know what mullet is and we all know how delicious it can be it being on the menu is is a, a chance for me to to reel somebody in and say hey this is this is one of our classic dishes revised uh, so I can bring it to you in a white tablecloth restaurant not too fancy you know it's the, it's simple simply prepared but I can present it in a manner that is acceptable to a white tablecloth restaurant My dad passed away in 75, yeah. okay? Before that, because we used to go out there with him a lot on that on that railroad trestle going over to the Naval Air Station, right there next to the bridge, going in the front gate. And in the wintertime, and just catch white trout like it was going out of style. And then cut a piece of cut bait. And just, just be able to do it, man. Same time the mullet was like so abundant. And that's when we get right back to what I said before. That's when anybody could go throw a net over there and have dinner mm -hmm. or more. We usually cook mullet at least um, at least once every couple of weeks. And but we go catch it. The kids got in the car, you know, went over here, we threw the net, caught the fish, come back home. You know, this was a, something we all did. And then come back home, clean them up, wash them off and cook them the same day. You know, mullet don't last all that long. It's Martin got does. to be fresh. Well, I think it's fair to say that it, it's true in, in, in all a lot of facets of the fishing industry, uh, not only in this area, but in Louisiana as well, all along the Gulf. A lot of families are kind of, you know, their, their children, they don't want to be the next generation of fishermen or shrimpers. And... So there's, there's a little bit of a struggle going on with that right now. Um, but I think it's up to folks like myself and, and chefs like myself to, to make sure that what they do goes, is not un, unappreciated and, and goes and does not go unseen. First of all, mullet has to be really fresh when you catch it and smoke it or grill it or, or fry it, whatever you decide to do with it. And, and that's why I believe that most choose to smoke it because you can impart a flavor to it uh, by different flavored wood chips. You can kind of mask the oiliness, the little bit of oiliness that the fish actually has, which is not offensive at all, especially if you've had it fresh and you've had it fried and it's, it's a delicious fish. But you don't want to go a couple few days on a fresh mullet because it, it, it just doesn't taste that good after, after a few days. So that's why, that's why they smoke it, because um, they can preserve it, they can save it, just like Roger does for me. Um, and it, it, it just has a great flavor smoked. You had to, um, you had to get it preserved some sort of way to, to, to hold on to it, you know? You couldn't go out and just kill something every day. You said the other day you thought it was kind of a, kind of a dying art. Well, it is. It, it, it is, but it, it seems like to me y'all out here, so it might be trying to come back, you know? And, and I like to see that, you know? I always enjoy a variety of, of anything. So if they got a better recipe, then let's, 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 let's put it up on the, on the thing and, 
and we will stop having barbecue competitions and start having smoked mullet competitions. How about that? I like and that. we get Irv cool. Miller involved in that, see? Yeah. Yeah. Now he can pour whatever he pours on it. I don't really know what he does. I mean, he wouldn't tell me. So uh, we, we can let him too. We can, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. If, if we take Florabama, which is the Florida and the Alabama line, and we and we take Redneck Riviera, which is where we think that it began there and extends to Apalachicola, they've created the mullet toss, right? So I don't know how many years ago that's been. I, I want to say it's been maybe 15 years, maybe longer. I'm not sure. But it, it's been going on for a while, and, it, and it's just kind of, you know, they take a mullet and they, they bend it in half, and they, they hold it, and they, they have a contest on who can throw that mullet the furthest. It's just something fun to do, you know, and, and it celebrates the mullet. The mullet celebrates living along the Gulf Coast, living along the Redneck Riviera. They're all, they're all synonymous. They're all tied in together.